Hi, this is Ken McAlexander, BallPythonInvestments.com. Today I'd like to take a few moments to show you how I ship live snakes. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and then the little bell uh, icon uh, just to be notified each time I upload a new video. But let's get started. Uh, to begin with, you need shipping boxes. I buy mine from a couple of different businesses. Uh, one is TSK Supply. See it right there. Um, TSK stands for the Snake Keeper. Um, they're well known for ball pythons and now green tree pythons as well. TSKSupply.com is just their supply company. Uh, another one I use is SuperiorShippingSupplies.com. I need to see that a little bit longer. SuperiorShippingSupplies.com. Um, I check both and I just see who happens to be cheaper for the things I need to order. Um, incidentally, I also buy all my deli cups, uh, shipping bags for snakes, um, and any other supplies I can get there, uh, both deli cups and water bowls. Um, so you've got your box, it's going to come to you in a big kit uh, with a bunch of flat pieces and styrofoam top, bottom, and sides. I'll spare you watching me put that together. But I've got one done here already. So just simply tape up the bottom. And I'm going to mention at least when I drop off boxes for FedEx, they require every side to be taped. So just one tape along the bottom uh, will not be allowed. They will make you tape these two sides as well on both the bottom and the top. So you might as well get those three pieces of tape on there now to begin with. And you'll be ready to go. Inside, you're just going to put in the bottom piece and then four sides. This box happens to be a seven by seven by six. So those four side pieces are all the same dimension. Uh, and then of course there's gonna be a lid to go on the top. If you were making a larger box, same sort of thing. You're gonna have your sides and you're gonna have your top. Um, now to package up the animals, I like to use shredded paper. Um, it's convenient because I'm shredding all my bills after I've paid them anyways. And it's going to look something like this. After you've filled it up, just a bunch of shredded paper. It provides a nice cushion. Don't think for a moment that your box is going to be shipped upright and stay like that the whole time. It's going to get bumped and jostled and turned upside down in every which direction. So I think this does a really good job of cushioning the animal. Uh, another thing to um, consider, maybe I've seen people use crumped up newspaper, crumpled up rather, newspaper, um, and also unprinted newsprint. Um, you know, whatever works for you, but the, the shredded paper works really well for me, and I've always got a bunch of it on hand, um, so it works just fine. Uh, another thing I want to mention, um, should it be the time of the year for heat packs, or more specifically, depending on where you're shipping from or shipping to, you may need heat packs or cold packs. Um, to begin with, I would never use this size box with any type of heat or cold pack. At a minimum, it would need to be this box, the 12 by nine by six, to allow room for your snake to not actually be on the warmer, for instance. So if that was gonna be the case, um, this summertime and the animals I'm shipping out today um, are not in need of a heat pack, but if they were, I would use something like these. Um, this is a 30 hour heat pack, 40 hour heat pack. These are specifically designed for shipping uh, reptiles and aquatics. Don't use a regular hand warmer like you'd find at a sporting goods store. They're not going to be the right thing. Um, you can get these at either of the companies I mentioned earlier for the boxes. I now exclusively use the 40 hour heat pack um, because if you go to shipyourreptiles.com, which happens to be the shipping company that I use, there's a great explanation there with a flow chart of how long each of these um, heat packs last and at what number of hours into the time after they've been activated they peak at their their temperatures and stuff so I only use the 140 if you look on there you'll see why um, no longer use these and so I'm going to open this one up anyway since it's going to get thrown away and show you how to tape it these red lines there's a bunch of dots or I should say openings rather in between these two red lines here these are not to be covered by tape tape up here across the top and across the bottom, leaving this exposed to the air because you need air in the box to activate this little heat packet so it will warm up. If this is covered with tape, it's not gonna warm up. You may be shipping a dead snake. Um, so you wanna leave that uncovered. Couple different ways to do that. What works for me 
I actually tape it on the inside of the box here. Um, and again, not putting the tape over the red lines. Um, the reason I like it taped on one side is I'm going to ship or I'm going to pack the animal more to the other side so it's not in direct contact with that heat pack or the cold pack, whichever the case would be, because that could obviously um, lead to harm to the snake. I don't want it to be right up against that. So I tape it to the side, just toss it in there loose. All kinds of terrible things could happen. Your snake's going to end up directly on that heat pack and it could cause a severe burn or the animal could die. You certainly don't want that issue. Another thing you'll see a lot of people do is tape it to the underside of the lid and then put that lid on. I'm actually against that because I've had animals shipped to me before where the person wasn't careful putting the tape on and the animal showed up with the heat pack in direct contact with the snake bag. So because I'm worried for something like that happening, again I tape it on the side like I mentioned. Or if I was really concerned, um, I'll take this egg crate cut down to size so it can just kind of sit here on the top. So I'd have my styrofoam packing, or excuse me, not styrofoam, but that's a possibility. I'd have my shredded paper and then I'd have this sitting in the top and then I'd have my heat pack on top of that. So there's no way for this to come in direct contact with the animal. And as well, you'll notice because of the depth here with this on top, you've got some built in air space top and bottom. So this is going to activate just fine because there's going to be plenty of air in there to keep that hot and there's no way it can come in direct contact with the animal. So if I'm shipping to an incredibly cold location um, or um, you know the temperatures are going to be really close down to 30, 35 uh, which is the lowest I would even consider sh shipping a snake then I will ship it with this method. This is going to be in there. We're not going to have to use that right now. Uh, so getting back to today's animal with the paper in there, there we go. Um, let me show you actually one other thing. Um, when I'm ready to pack up the animal, we're gonna have the lid on there. Now the animal's inside, heat pack or cold pack as necessary. Then I'm going to take the receipt for the animal. A couple of my business cards. Shameless plug there, ballpythoninvestments.com. And this is very important. This is as well printed out from shipyourreptiles.com, who again is the company I use for all my shipping. And this is a requirement of the Lacey Act to have a shipping document inside the packaging that states that it's a live harmless, or in this case, live non-venomous live reptile in secure packaging inside. This just sits right here on the top. So should there be any problem with the packaging, the shipment, any question by FedEx, uh, what's in there or anything, and they open this box up, that's the first thing you want them to see. There's a warning that it's a live reptile and that it's harmless. Uh, hopefully it's never going to go past that and they're just going to package it back up and it's going to be on its way. But that would be the proper way to have everything set up. With today's animal, we're going to be using this smaller box because, again, no heat pack necessary. So, might as well save on space and shipping costs. Some people will ship in deli cups, which I think is probably required for other animals but or other reptiles. But with snakes, I always just use a shipping bag. This happens to be an 8x12 bag with a little drawstring tie. We have our little animal here that's being shipped. This happens to be a little... GHA, GHI Fire Female. And I'm going to put one little piece of paper towel in here just in case she defecates on the trip. There's something in there to absorb it. Animal simply goes in there, close up your drawstring, tie it real good. Uh, a great idea is to put a zip tie around this. Um, I've seen that done many times. I just don't because when the person picks up, or when my customer picks up their animal, they're usually going to want to open it up and see what they've got right away. And most people aren't taking scissors with them to pick up their animal if they're picking it up at FedEx because it's been held at the uh, nearest depot. Or like in my case, all my animals are shipped to a uh, monitored mailbox at a UPS store. Um, so I'm not usually taking scissors with me, so I just simply tie it in a little bow tie there. If it's coming to the 
to the customer's house. Obviously they're gonna have scissors, they can cut that little twist die and I think that's a great way to go. But we just take our animal, nestle them in here, her rather, into the box. I have a little bit of space there to fill. With some more shredded paper. I guess I'll go ahead and show this. This is also really convenient. This is the bin from my paper shredder. So it's super easy to just grab out of there and pack the animal. Got this all put in. Again, there was no heat tape for this one. I've misplaced my lid, so I'm gonna grab one from over here. Lid goes on. And now we have to fold up our receipts and our notice, just so it's gonna fit in here easily. Again, I put receipt down first, a couple business cards, and then in this case, we have to fold this up. This is our live harmless reptile warning. And I want it to say harmless side up. So I'm just gonna fold it like so and put that in. Animal's ready to go. We're gonna tape this up real fast, hopefully. Because I wanna show you a couple more things. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the tape that you had come from the bottom. You want the tape across the top to make contact with this. So tape on tape, just for the most secure packaging possible. And then again, when I drop off to FedEx, they require all three sides to be taped. This is, helps us get a better seal around the side as well. Now comes time to create your shipping label. You need to take measurements. Don't go by what you've got down here. This says it's a seven by seven by six box. But as you'll see when we go to measure, that's over seven inches. So now this has to, well, let me get it over the edge. It's just barely over seven if this is lined up properly. So now that's eight. That's just barely over going by the edge of the box here. So eight by eight. And this is within seven. So now our seven by seven by six box is actually eight by eight by seven. And that's the dimensions that need to be entered in when you ship your animal. Now we also need to weigh it. I've got a little postal scale right here. Now we need to weigh the box after we've got our dimensions. Helps if we turn it on first. I highly recommend getting yourself a scale that measures both in grams and in ounces. Um, reason being when you're measuring animals weights, everybody is accustomed in the United States even to giving a gram weight. But when it comes time to shipping, it has to be in ounces. So we'll get our box on here. And we can see 438 grams, but again, we need to convert. This one, you can just hit units. And we're at 15.4 ounces, yay. So I can put down one pound. You have to round up, even if it's one-tenth of a pound, or excuse me, one-tenth of an ounce above, you need to always round up. But this is gonna work, because obviously 16 ounces is a pound. I can label this animal as one pound shipment, and I'm good to go. Um, just as a side note, should you have a little bitty scale like I do, and a really big box, what are you gonna do? You can't see the weight. So one thing I've thought of is just take a deli cup, flip it upside down, re-zero, and then put your box on. Now you've got enough space there to see your dimension. Of course, this is an empty box, it would be much heavier. But just a little tip, to help you out with the shipping. All right, last consideration here. Uh, when you're looking at your shipping label, you'll see here where it starts with an X. That would mean this package is going to be routed through Memphis, Tennessee. If it started with an N, it would be routed through Indianapolis, Indiana. 
Uh, that's important because you want to check either one of those to see the weather um, at the time of your shipment so you know how to package appropriately. And then just want to point out I'm covering this up so you don't see the uh, my customer's name and shipping number. Uh, but you want to make sure this shipping label is taped down completely. Uh, I like to make sure it's completely covered with tape. Uh, so should it actually be exposed to rain or anything, the shipping label won't get messed up. And then the last thing to be packaged properly and in line with the Lacey Act, you need to, at some in some manner, be labeled on here that it's a reptile and that you need to have the common name, the scientific name, and the quantity. Um, again, since I use shipyourreptiles.com, this uh, label that they provide if you buy your boxes from them or you can buy um, these labels independently um, just stick this on the side and I can just check that it's reptiles and not fish and again put in quantity in this case it's one ball python and python regius is the scientific name and you are ready to ship your animal out thanks for watching if you have any comments or questions put them below